Yep, she's on her way. She's oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, historic levy is the next graph. And basically what this one is showing us is there's nothing. Uh, basically what this one's showing us is uh, where we tax. I don't like this graph uh, very much because it doesn't show, uh, the orange does appear on some years where there wasn't uh, a building levy, uh, but it does appear uh, through, through the years there as well. So hopefully that's easy enough to read. Um, but those are the historic uh, tax levies that we've asked for in the various funds. Uh, the, the next set of graphs, just tells us a little the story of our historical revenue, um, where we get money from the federal government, the state government, um, and, and local. There's an outlier on this one. Uh, we talked about this before. The, the graph where I pulled this from um, had the value on the end here as, uh, I, I can't really explain that one. It's just kind of a graph that I pulled from. Uh, but that's that one's kind of an outlier with no uh, data to it. So if you take a look at the far right one, that one is uh, meaningless data. So you see that most of our funding from the school um, is through local tax dollars. Um, when we go to the next slide, and, and I usually try to do this via PowerPoint the last time, but um, I misplaced my keys and I couldn't find the uh, big tech. <laughs> Big TV, so I apologize for that. But it'll give you an idea of the historical state aid. Um, so you can see the larger numbers in 08 and, uh, through 11, and that accounts for some stimulus money that was inserted into schools from the legislature at that time. Um, we're always gonna get some sort of state aid, but the value for the next year could be distinctly different. Um, a good way to look at the, the situation that Layton is in is we're kind of land rich and student poor. Uh, the student aid formula is written like this. It's needs minus resources equal your state aid. Um, so they look at the student population along with other, stu other schools with similar populations and subtract that value from what the district can raise at a dollar a levy. Um, so that's kind of a complicated way of looking at it, but uh, you, you can see the difference in state funding. Um, in the 2022-23 year, the, the, up, uh, the reason why that's up is we had uh, a plus, you know, for, correct me if I'm wrong here, like a plus 16 net option enrollment. Maybe a little higher than that, but that money is accounted for those net option um, students that come to option into Layton's district. And that's from last year. Yep, that was from last year. So the previous year, the year before that, when they were the state aid was twenty-seven thousand. We talked about. Uh, we'll talk about net option funding in the, in the next slide. Thomas, did you say that the uh, option money is at one hundred seventy-nine? Uh, I think it's like around one hundred and sixty. Almost nothing, yep, exactly. Um, and, and that's the, the next uh, slide. Um, it's kind of the, the opportunity to talk about net option funding. Net, net option funding in state aid this year uh, would be around $160,000. Um, and this, mon this money is probably not gonna be there next year. Um, as of Tuesday of the week that we did our um, board workshop, we were under the impression that we're gonna be around negative 11 in net option. So we're not going to be charged <laughs> charged for it, but it will be at a zero for that, uh, for sure. So um, when we didn't have that option funding, our state aid was around thirty thousand. So that kind of answers that question about uh, the impact that that option funding has on the, the state aid that we receive at the district. Um, we anticipate, based on prior years, that we'll be able to collect about a million and a half dollars in revenue before property and taxes are made to the city. Um, the next document you'll see is our proposed budget for the 2022-23 school year. Um, it goes over the uh, operating budget and the uh, proposed uh, tax rate for both funds that, we, that we'll be um, proposing to tax at. The uh, general fund is going to be, uh, we're looking for the, at the tax asking as $3,813,222 in the general fund and around $72,000 in the special building fund. So with the total levy of, uh, at the bottom, uh, it's kind of a little bit more difficult to read on my page, but uh, if you go to the column that says proposed 2022 tax rate and go all the way down to the bottom, it'll be that uh, 0.90 levy, for, for, which is what we're proposing for this year. Uh, the, the 
next item on, the, on here is just a, an idea of where we're spending the money based on the proposed budget for the 2022-2023 school year. It, it breaks down our certified staff payroll, our classified staff payroll, um, extra duty payroll, our transportation costs that we're, that we're hoping to be at, um, some operating and maintenance costs and special education costs around a half a million. So um, these six items make up all but a million dollars of our projected expenses. Uh, not including items like insurance, textbooks, substitute teachers, internet, computers, phones, and, and all of those areas that it takes to run a school. On the general fund cash balance, that's our next um, item that we'd like to discuss on here. Um, we just kind of see the, uh, the general flow of uh, the impact that, that having less, uh, well, well, I'll just explain it this way, our, our general fund cash balance has just been slowly declining um, over the years. Uh, this next year we'll start with about 820,000 and Janela likes it to be about a million. So that's that's an area where uh, at the previous board meeting we, um, we moved uh, $100,000 to our depreciation fund um, and we earmarked it for a bus uh, or some sort of student transportation vehicle so we can um, have money in there if we need to replace a bus. Uh, so that, that accounts for the start of the year at 820,000. Um, if we wouldn't have done that, we would have started at like 920,000. Uh, the graph that we're gonna look at here is just um, keeping the levy the same. So if we, if we keep the levy the same, um, and it, with a slight increase in state aid, not next year, um, but the following year, uh, this information um, just shows us that our beginning cash um, in the blue, uh, if we keep the levy the same and, and continue experiencing our expenses like they are, um, we're, we're gonna run out of money as a district. So uh, we're, okay for, we're okay for next year, uh, but the years following uh, might be a struggle for us uh, here at the school. Uh, so the expenses, we're just basing those on a 3% annual increase. Um, expenses will outpace receipts in 2022-2023. Uh, cash won't run out the following year, but we'll be in a, in a cash flow problem in that if, if we uh, left the levy the same. The next graph is about the depreciation fund. I talked a little bit about this earlier, uh, but that's the uh, that's the fund. You'll see that uh, major dip, and that's accounted for for some some big projects here at the school. Um, there, there's some great projects that we have. So the cash balance of uh, the start of the 2021-22 fiscal year was around 235,000. Uh, the 2021-22 budget was for 306,000. Right now, the budget for 2022-2023 will be set at 306,000 as well. So that's the depreciation fund. Next one is the special building fund that we that, that will be asking for taxes on as well this year. Uh, and you can see in 2011-2012 what I was talking about with. Uh, um, some dips there. We just want this to be a healthy balance going forward in case we need to do new, new construction um, for our facilities. Um, and then I, I believe that's uh, the, the budget workshop that, that we presented uh, a couple times. Um, so I wanted to uh, just share that with you guys. Um, at the previous budget workshops, we talked a little bit about um, some facilities, things that might need to be um, looked at so those are, those are areas that we just want to be prepared for um, in, in all of our funds to make sure that they're healthy as we go forward with, with the school. Um, so that's my presentation um, for the board tonight. Thank you. those speakers recognized by the board president shall be allowed to speak. A time limit of five minutes per speaker is allowed.
A speaker at a board meeting shall not orally initiate charges or complaints against district employees or challenge instructional materials used in the district or shall use the appropriate board policy to process such complaints. Superintendent and board are not subject to questioning by the speakers. To speak to an agenda item, an individual must stand be recognized by the board president, state your name and address, state the agenda item to which you wish to speak, your name will be placed under that agenda item, and you will be called upon to speak when that topic is up for discussion. If the speaker has written or printed materials to be circulated during the board meeting, he or she must have submitted this information to the superintendent no later than the Friday immediately preceding the board meeting, the Monday board meeting, if it's a regular meeting. Written materials not submitted by the deadline will not be reviewed or considered by the board at the meeting. So before I get started, do I understand I got five minutes to ask all my questions or five minutes per question? Five minutes will be five minutes among speakers. Okay, well, I'm, I'll speak multiple times for five minutes. How's that? Um, my first question is on your first page. I'll just go through the workshop. By the way, it's Chris Geary, 11311 Road 60, Dalton, Nebraska. Um, the general description of expenses and receipts. So it, it appears that over the last three years, the, the expenses have been basically static. Is that correct? Yep, I, I mean, yep, we yep. have the, the same stuff. So, yeah. so there, there hasn't been a lot of increase the past three years. Um, the question that I have regarding valuations and tax levy that's a, that's a difficult thing for the public to understand because as one goes up, the other goes down, you may be asking for the same amount of money. I would like to see a graph of how much the tax ask has been and what you're gonna do with the tax ask again this year. Um, historical state aid, I asked the question earlier in terms of the 160,000, that was from last year's option students. And I think the public needs to understand that. And we had, if you just use these numbers, you had plus 16 last year, and this year at minus 11, just in option students, you've had a decrease in enrollment of 27 students from 142, that's close to 20%, somewhere between 15 and 20% decline in student enrollment. You're asking for a one cent increase in the levy, but you're asking for. One minute, one minute. What's our enrollment? Um, I don't know. I'm just going by what's published here. Yeah, so enrollment numbers are off. Do you have questions? Isn't this about questions? Yeah, it, it all, all of this information I filters into one okay. question. Thank you. I only have five minutes unless I get sat down and come back. You're suggesting that you increase the levy a cent. So not only did the levy go up, but also did the valuation go up. So taxpayers this year are being hit double. Their valuation's going up and the levy's going up. All of that coupled together with these expenses on the next page it seems to me like there has been a complete disregard for the decrease in enrollment. And I think Mr. McLaughlin said, if we maintain expenses as they are, this board had an opportunity not to replace four or five teachers at about $50,000 a piece. That's anywhere from 200 to $250,000 that this district could have saved the taxpayers if they would have chosen to do that. Um, my question is, I'm, I'm also distracted. I'm not sure what's going on with this happening. Um, so your beginning cash balance, uh, is at 819. I think you said it would be 920 yeah. if you hadn't moved a hundred thousand dollars for a bus. Um, and what, and what is the, what is the suggested carryover?
Janella likes to keep it at a million. I happen to know that. So, so it could have been kept at a million, very close, within 10%. Um, I think I heard you say that the decline in depreciation was because of some great projects that happened at this district. Did I hear you right? Okay. Um, the, the number here in the depreciation fund is under 200,000. Does that include the 100,000 that you already put in there? Yep. It does, okay, thank you. Um, and then we're gonna continue to put money in the, in the building fund, is that correct? Yeah. So we've got a balance right now of 260? Uh, I believe so. Uh, close to that, but you're gonna add another 70 something to that. Yep. So you'll have over $300,000 in the building fund. Okay. So, so my questions for the board, and I think would represent what the public would want to know is why when given the opportunity with declining enrollment, has this board chosen to give significant raises, hire additional staff that were not necessary with class sizes, more than one, fewer than 10 students, and why have we been spending money so freely when you look at the graph and if you keep doing that, you're gonna be bankrupt? That's all I have. Do you have any questions for me? Okay. Thank you. We didn't add anything, we put a 
title to it, so it says, hey, this is what they are, this is where it takes them. So there was I'm not an there. increase in cost. There wasn't an, is it, if it's on the extra duty schedule, is there not a, is there not a stipend? It's, but it's not on the extra duty schedule. I don't know where, where you came up I just that. read that in the, in the minutes. It, it, it's not on the extra duty schedule. That is on the classified staff page. So it's, it's on the, like that's how they raise as a classified employee. So there's there's things on there for like a CDL license, uh, class B ah, license. Where we, where so we have like four or five different things so that we can divide yeah. the numbers yeah. in that. I mean, so you added a category in the classified pay schedule. Okay, that's not what was reported for, that's not what I read. So I'll go back and reread that, so thank you. Yep. Um, as far as enrollment, what is our enrollment for this year? I, I have to check, I'm sorry, I just did not look at that. I was gonna say that we've had kids come and go in those last week. Oh, okay. yeah. Around right. about 130. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. All right, so we had two come in. So, okay. all right, okay. So we're not down to 27. How many were there last year? 142. So we're down 12 then? 12, yeah. Give or take on the day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. And I think a, a, main, yeah. a main thing when it comes to the state aid stuff, we, we, dip, we definitely took a hit on options too. Right. So. Yes. There we go. Um, on the printings, excuse me, English, uh, spending freely. Talking about where our general fund cash balance is. Well, as you mentioned, uh, we need we would like that. The state would also like that. Be three months of spending, which is up to a million dollars. Yep. And the only way we can get there is by adding. So if you look at five oh, of the yeah. last six years, we've been lost, 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 except for 2020, 2021. So to build that back up, we have to get that in flow somehow to get to our million dollars. I think I heard you say the only way to increase our cash balance is to increase our revenue. Is that what I heard? No. To increase, it's just like it's just like we're doing in our uh, which bracket are we adding a little bit to? Special building. Special building. We have to add a little bit to be able to get back to where we want to be, right? So we have projects to be safe later in the future in case they need something. We have got to make sure that money's in there. To start the school year off, we're already not there. That puts Janela and the school district in a bad place. So you affirmed what I thought. You, you're increased, you're asking for $100,000 more from the taxpayer. So that's one way to increase, the, and I agree, that's one way to increase your beginning balance. Okay? But I'm suggesting that not hiring teachers and combining classes and saving money is another way to increase your beginning balance. So the same thing we would say about that's, that's President done. Biden, right? Quit spending so much money. Agreed, but that's done over with. That was done three, four months ago. We are where we are. We have got to get our budget to where we can be. Yes. Uh, we did some great things with the hirings of these teachers. For anybody that doesn't know, Phil, watch this. Um, what do you call it exactly? Or is it the, oh, we're bringing the classes together. Uh, so I can compartmentalize yeah. it. Compartmentalizing in our elementary a little bit. Um, there's a lot of school districts doing it. There's some neat um, things that we can do with it. It gives our teachers a better focus in on one category for different grades. So I see it as a bonus for the education of my students. And to clarify a statement, there are a couple of positions that we did not fill. We did not fill a school nurse. We did not completely fill an elementary principal. So, and if we are on the right track by not doing that, we should. Say the administration pay for uh, quite a bit, saving some good money. So, so from what I heard uh, is that you're kind of trying to uh, build the staff in, a hope, uh, in hopes that the school will grow and get some more students back in. Is that kind of what? Well, you're we don't want it to die. I mean, we're trying to stay positive. Yes, about our school district. More so, I guess it was you guys have a plan. I would say to go in at the end of last year, we were reported that we would have 100 or less students in our 
of school, so we tried to plan around that. Then we realized our numbers would be better than we thought, so we have done everything we can to make sure our students have what they need for this year in the classroom. I think we're net lower on certified staff. And that, so our goal is not to build staff, it's just to move. The opportunity, in my opinion, to reduce staff even further it makes it particularly hard on the teachers that are here because they somebody has to pick up the slack, and it's always possible. But I, I don't think we're that point. Yeah, it makes it difficult for um, you know, like a first grade teacher and a second grade teacher. We have um, a pretty low number in, in our second. First grader, it'd be a, a pretty difficult ask for a first grade teacher to teach first and second grade in, in a way where it's going to give everybody what they need at those grade levels. So that's that was one of the considerations that we had as well. Uh, another thing I just want to point out um, while we're talking about increase, 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 what's unique about governmental budgets, unfortunately, is that you budget way more than you ever anticipated. So really the idea behind this budget and in working with Carl was to do this increase, because it is an increase, with hoping that we don't have extenuating circumstances that cause us to have additional expenditures that we wouldn't normally have each year. And then not only see a jump up in our cash balance of just 100,000 or 200,000, but potentially more, so that we can move forward with a more reserved plan um, when it comes to the levy, but getting the number to move in the opposite direction, I think is the significant goals with this budget and this levy this year, so that we can kind of get a baseline of where we're going. We've had a few years where we've had additional expenses that we didn't, I don't think were entirely planned for. Yes, they were under budget, but I think here, you know, we're always talking about increasing, and that's hard to see you're looking at a budget, unfortunately, you want to maximize your budget authority and do that 2% increase, whether you're really going to spend it or not, because what that does in the long run puts you in a favorable position if we ever had to spend a lot of money of, of cash reserves, <clears throat> if we built that up. So. How much of an increase would you have gotten if you just left the letter the same with an increase in valuation? Would that have come in more close to Unfortunately, it's not one for one. I wish I could always say, like, yeah, we're doing this 1% increase. It's because everything else stayed the same. Unfortunately, everything else doesn't stay the same. And that makes it hard to plan. Um, and, it, and it makes it hard, again, when we're doing these asks and the increases. And then this makes it hard with it. We changed our process this year um, with LB644. And while it's easier, the idea is easier for a taxpayer to address all the taxing entities that they might be subject to. They can go to this one meeting and air out their complaints at this one meeting with these increases. It will be interesting to see how this actually plays out this year, since this is our first year year doing that, and if it really is a benefit to taxpayers and patrons and how that impacts the school. Um, you know, again, because. reason of us having to go to this workshop again is that it was around a 2% increase and that 2% increase is based off of new growth and it's not valuation growth it's new buildings that anybody built um, those types of improvements so if valuation had strictly increased just because inflation and coupons are all going up but there had been no 
So in growth, we would be limited to just strictly a 2% increase, which this year would only fund $76,000. And when we're talking about losing potential funding of $160,000, where do we make that up if we're not going um, and asking for additional money? Well, I would assume the transportation costs have gone up quite a bit. I don't know what it was last year, but it's just fuel costs right there. I assume that's probably pretty big increase. Yeah. I just did some quick math in the last five years. We're down, our three funds are the general fund, the special building fund, and the depreciation fund. From five years ago, $1.9 million. That's what we're up against because we're in danger. Our funds need to need to remain at certain levels just to just to operate properly. So I think we're we're cutting it as thin as we can. Uh, however, I mean it, 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 a penny would be close to the same request as last year. Maybe a pinch more. Hundred thousand total. Well, I, I kind of want to address that one question that Mr. Here you have uh, 2021 tax rate. The Board of Lincoln approved 0.899135 as the levy. If you remember correctly, last year we approved 0.872774, so we dropped the levy. Not what that number is. That number shows you what the property tax rate would have been in 21 had you had 22's valuation. Oh, I read that wrong. Sorry. That's okay. So what would have been uh, I thought, well, actually I thought your, last year's was on. You're 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 asking for almost two hundred thousand dollars more in your general fund. Three point six million to three point eight million. So you're getting an extra two hundred thousand dollars, which makes sense according to what Ms. Carter said. If you're losing one hundred and sixty thousand dollars in state aid, in order to keep everything about the same, you need that two hundred thousand dollars from the taxpayer. So let's make it clear that the taxpayers are reimbursing for what the state did not. In inflation. Inflation is not included. Still confused because it looks to me like we asked almost 90 cents last year between the special building fund and the general, and we're asking 90.8 cents this year, almost 91. So you're at almost 90, to almost 91. That's one cent, okay. and it's getting you an additional total additional hundred thousand dollars, but two hundred thousand dollars of that is in the general fund. You're reducing your request in the building. I mean, the funds uh, over the last five years have gotten us in to a, a place where we need to take care of them. I mean, we just need to be responsible with our general fund and with, with our other two funds, depreciation and special building funds. I think 
case some of these are value tracks, things like that, we've got we've got a list right on the back page that you know, things that uh, what, what we need to keep an eye on. What was the number? Oh, sorry, Walt. What was the number on that list with the HVAC? Didn't you give us a rough number last meeting? For the yeah, and then I, I don't have it on my printout because I printed it up the one without the other. So you, you guys kind of had it on the bottom there with the HVAC mm -hmm. on, the, on the bottom. So we had several several units there with the uh, current prices. cost of, of get the kids to school safely um, and, and, and being able to, to make sure that we have the, the funds available to, to meet those needs. Uh, but HVAC was one, one item on that uh, facilities list that you know we have listed out there with 34 of these units that run 10,000 bucks a piece. So it's a, and we're having trouble with one right now in the elementary building. So those things are just general general upkeep type things that you know, we're going to need to be, to be ready for in the event that something goes down. And the units are around 12 years old, so those are, those are areas where you know, we just want to be ahead of the curve instead of you know, behind. Well, and one thing is, to be fair, I mean, the 1.9 million that's reduced over the last five years in our funds, we have a lot to show for that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot to show for that. Uh, the signs are in the trash. The, it, some of the new buildings. Yeah, but, right. Those. So it's not money gone. It's just that uh, we need to watch the funds. Well, if I could, I, I could just summarize the general description here. In 2017 and 2018, total expenses were 4.1 million, 4 million 117,000. And with minor fluctuations in between, last year, the year ending September 1st, is basically the same number. So in the past five years, even though the classified staff and the certified staff have experienced, and inflation, as you mentioned, have experienced significant growth, previous board has done a great job of keeping expenses very similar. And thankfully, they have the wisdom to raise the levy because your receipts went from 3.84, 3 3.9, 4.1. We're not, we're not here board. to argue. We're not here to argue with boards. That's not. I, I'm just trying to point out. You have the I public know. is not here. The yeah. public is not here. I'm just trying You're to make information. And I've pointed out to the public that 1.9 million dollars is gone. And so they they can look right here. They get 186, they get 253, they get a four call. That was gone before this board. Right. Exactly. We're not here to argue with board in this board. If you have questions, please ask questions. That's what we're doing. He's bringing accusations to the old board right. compared to this. Look, I'm glad we're not. Can the public see these numbers? No, there was no accusation, either intended or implied. Several people there, we don't need them there. Right. right. So, and, it, and it's 
all of Cheyenne County and, yeah. and those exact same entities. So you're gonna have people that are not only addressing school boards, but I don't know if they're fundraising over there. I think that's like this one. This is the meeting with all the people in the city of Manhattan and their commissioners actually. Yeah. Well that those should be separate. Yeah. Is so it all the same meeting though? Is it just no, this is this should strip this hearing on the twenty sixth should be strictly for Yes, I'm sorry. That may be. Uh, this is the county commissioner's office, doesn't it? Yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you the exact uh, place here. Let me just find it. Um, so it says it's in the. Tuesday we have uh, volleyball at Bridgeport at seven. Um, Thursday is volleyball at Arthur. Like I said, I don't know if I have to 